It's time for today's race at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache circuit here in Sao Paulo. And as any of the 80,000 capacity crowd will tell you, this is going to be a fantastic race. We're racing today then at Interlagos, a historic 2.7 mile circuit and one of the few anti-clockwise tracks on the calendar. 15 corners in total, 9 to the left and 6 to the right, with a technical middle section opening up to a flat-out sector 3. That gives us our best passing opportunity down into turn 1. I, for one, can't wait to get started. And there's another very excited little chap here beside me as well. It's our very own Anthony Davidson. Great to see you again today. Thanks for that, Crofty. And I'm really anxious to get underway here. We've got all the makings of a great race today. World champions in competitive cars, lots of drivers on form, and I suspect a few strategists on the pit wall looking to try something a bit different and maybe jump their cars up the order. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Gasly, Charles Leclerc and Verstappen, Hulkenberg, Perez, Ricardo, and Kevin Magnussen, Rojan, Stroll, Kimi Raikkonen and Sainz, Van Dorn, Marcus Ericsson and Brendan Hartley. Alonso and Sergei Sorokin rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. OK, the run into turn one isn't too long, so the pack will be bunched up. Take care. Hello, everyone, and welcome back, guys, to the penultimate round of the F1 2020 Charles Leclerc Mod Career Mode, where today we're here back in Brazil, a track that has played host to many many Formula One World Championship deciders over the years and theoretically potentially today it could host the title decider as well although I highly highly doubt it in all honesty. Three points separate myself and Lewis Hamilton as we head into the penultimate round of the season. This is honestly looking like one of the closest career modes I think I've ever had on any of the Formula One games so hopefully today we're going to have a nice clean race. Qualifying didn't go all too well we start this one down in P5 on the grid, but Hamilton didn't make it onto the front row either. So it's certainly going to be interesting nonetheless. Obviously, if you do go on to enjoy, make sure you get yourself subscribed and obviously leave a like as well. I don't think, you know, it really, really does help the channel out a lot more than I think most people realise for what should hopefully only take a couple of seconds as well. But let's cut the chit chat and let's just dive right into this then. 18 laps ahead of us around this Brazilian Grand Prix circuit. The five lights are coming on now, Lan. It is five red lights, and it is a lights out, and away we go. Not a very good start there, as you can see, bogging down atrociously as we head into turn one, and Verstappen's going to give us a squeeze through the first corner. Okay, it's, yeah, definitely not been a good start. Down to P7. Luckily, only wall con uh, tire wall to tire wall contact there with... Sebastian, uh, Esteban, I'm even sorry, I should say, as we head down in towards turn four. But that has not been the start we needed. We now got Perez in the racing point, trying to look up the inside. It's going to move to the outside in towards the next corner, though. So we do hold on, but yeah, not been a good start for ourselves. We lose two spots. Hampton stays where he is off the start of this Grand Prix, and I'm sort of just trying to plan ahead. You know, we've been doing that a lot this season. Abu Dhabi is never particularly a particularly is never particularly a strong track for ourselves. So we'll wait and see as to what does happen around here because I would like to go into the final with a points advantage, but at the moment, based on that lap one, not looking not looking like that's gonna be so easy. Hopefully we can try and settle down into a rhythm though as we head now onto lap two. Seb still leading the way there. I'm gonna guess it's Bottas still in P2. We need to try and get past off on though. All over the back now of Ocon as we head down the hill in towards Jung Sao. Don't say we're going to be able to make that move work. Ocon's going to try and keep the nose there. We're going to squeeze him out over the curbs and somehow we pull that off in the end. So I'll take that quite happily at the end of lap two. We're back a bit of P6 the Grand Prix. Now only obviously the top runners 
left just in front of us there. But yeah, quite surprised actually. Ocon didn't quite get the run and then we sort of found ourselves on the outside and we made it work. New fast lap for the Grand Prix as well. Things you love to see. Always takes us a couple of laps to get back into a rhythm. But now hopefully we can start pushing as I think one of the Mercedes has got past Seb. They're going to be going side by side down in towards turn four. That's going to budge them all up dramatically. Seb still holding on though to the lead of Grand Prix. And yeah, this is going to help out myself and the Red Bulls. As yeah, Seb does hold on to the lead of the race. But you can see we're not far. Well, it's all the train again now. So we're going to have to try and pick our way past the Red Bulls. Obviously, they struggle down the straights. Back end, just a little bit all over the shot there. But we've held on to it in the end. Hopefully, we can try and line up a move on Verstappen at Jung Sao. Oh, he's going to go defensive. He needs to get on with it. It's what he needs to do. At the final corner. Hopefully, now we can try and get a run. Oh, the Red Bull up the inside. We got the DRS as well. Should be fairly textbook. He's going to try and give us a squeeze, but we're going to make it work. Fuel target is plus one. Faster engine modes are available. Up into P5 of the Grand Prix is once again Bottas and Seb going side by side through the first couple of corners. We've just got to try and hope that Hamilton can't get through and then form a breakaway. It's all kicking off at the start of this race. I think they're going three wide up there. That's quite impressive. But Hamilton on the outside is going to get hung out to dry. But he might be able to make the move work now on his teammate Bottas. So it's all, you know, it's a case of we got to be right there as well to be able to fight this. Come on, Albon, get the run. Oh, what is that? Me! I think Albon got a bit of a wobble on there, but we've got round him. A slight bit of front wing damage. Front wing. Just completely swiped across us. Have some chill album, mate. But anyway, we're now on to P4 then. So we don't have to worry about navigating... Well, hopefully we don't have to worry about navigating the Red Bulls anymore. But now we've got Bottas just in front of us. And Seb and Lewis battling for the lead. Oh, we've got a bit of a run on Bottas by the looks of it. I don't know if he's, if he's even going to have the DRS. He does have the DRS, but nowhere near the slipstream that we've been able to get up the inside. We go another new fast lap of the Grand Prix. Oh, there's, there's a bit of contact, I think, with Bottas through turn one. But obviously, not only are we focusing on our Drivers' World Championship, we need the Constructors as well for the team. We have got a little bit of a margin over Mercedes to come into this one, but only about, I think it's like 15 points, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, we're on to the podium places now. It's time to try and apply some pressure and see if we can close up to the top two. Coming out of Jung Sao, we're definitely just about, I think, in the DRS of Hamilton and Seb. It's exactly what we need. The front wing damage isn't costing us too much, but it's definitely losing us a little bit of time. Another new fast lap of the Grand Prix, though. As Hamilton now muscles his way to the inside of Seb. He'll have the outside turn two. Hopefully, we can try and capitalise on this as well. Potentially get a bit of a run on the pair of them. Seb's this time around going to have the DRS, but he's still stuck on the outside. As we head down in towards turn four, Hamilton slots back in behind. We're just trying to just sit back and stay sensible at the moment. We've obviously already got a little bit from wing damage. I'm not going to change it at the pit stops unless we can have any more. It's just time we don't unnecessarily want to lose. Team on us to box this lap. I don't really want to unless we need to. We might try and do the opposite of what Hamilton does here. In all honesty, because I don't want to get stuck with him. Where is he going to go? Hamilton's going to dive in. We're going to have to stay out. But now we need to try and get the run on Seb. Otherwise, Seb's going to dive in. And then we'll trip over each other. So I've now probably got to go two laps longer in this race. So we'll see how the tyres hold up. And just hope that Hamilton gets caught up in traffic. End of lap nine. We're now at the halfway stage of the Grand Prix. I take it Seb's going to dive in. End of this one. So we are going to have to try and go one lap longer in this race. Yeah, there we go. Seb's coming in. So we're going to have to try and go one extra lap here. And I don't think Hamilton's been affected too much by traffic. So we're really going to have to try and pray that the tyres hang on in there. And pray that we can get a good in lap. This has got to be good. This could be World Championship defining. This single lap in a Grand Prix. They always talk about how you've got to respond in these high-pressure situations. 
Let's see if we can do that. Down is turn four. Looks like Hamilton has been able to get past Seb as well. That's, that's not ideal. So Hamilton's definitely, unless we nail this, there's been a bit of a mistake through there. Hamilton's, yeah, probably going to get the undercut on us. But we'll have fresh rubber to the end. It's not over until it's over in these races, but... Come on. Get the rotation through nice and tiny. No wheel spin. Anything like that. Been a fairly tidy lap. A couple of small mistakes, but nothing that's really cost us any time, I think. Out of Jung Sao. And now we've got to try and make sure we get it slow down into the pit lane. Don't do what we did back in Japan. Just about get it stopped on the marks. That's exactly what we needed there. So yes, uh, Lewis, by the looks of it then, has got about a 1.8 second margin. We need a good tidy pit stop. Two and a half. That's okay. I think we are going to get jumped, but it's a case of like how many drivers. Coming down to the end of the pit lane. Oh, I've clicked the wrong button, of course. Right then, do I click the wrong button? Well, I'm really, really concentrated. Anyway, out of the pit lane we go. Through turn one. You can hear Lewis on the outside. We've got to try not to clip the pit wall there. Lewis is just going to get round us. But we've actually got the overcut on Sebastian here. So we've got two lap fresher rubber than Lewis. Surely we can make this move work. But we have got to try and get him up to temperature as well. We need to win this race. A 10 point margin going into Abu Dhabi would be very, very nice to have. It means we only need to finish second to him. Because I still don't know what countback's looking like. Lewis, new fast lap of the Grand Prix. Seb, though, goes three tenths faster as we head into turn one. We almost, well, we did clip the grass. We got lucky to get away with it that time round. But we got a little bit of spare fuel, a fair bit on the ERS. But it's just about trying to time our move. At the final corner once again, though, we're a bit close to Hamilton this time round. We might be able to get the run down in towards turn one. We've dragged Seb a little bit close to him as well. And yeah, look at the straight line speed this Ferrari has got over the Mercedes. They're right around the outside before we even get into turn one. Now we need to try and get a good run through the center S to make sure that he can't get back past us, I think. We've done okay there. And yeah, Hamilton's not even showing up on the radar, which is always a good sign. Up into the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix, I think for the first proper time in this race, with five to go. And Lewis tries to have a look up the inside into turn, in towards turn five and six. He clearly wants to get back into the lead of this Grand Prix, but I'm sure he doesn't want to take us both out either. Ooh, back end tried to get a little bit loose there. Luckily held on to it. No idea what that's going to do in terms of our run at the final corner. Accidentally pressing the wrong buttons again. I've pressed the wrong button. How bad am I? It's 19 races. Oh my god, there's contact with Hamilton as well. 19 races and we still do things like that. Right. There we go. We've worked out which button's which again. Lewis is going to try and look up the inside in towards turn four, though. Seb might try and follow him through. No, we're much, much later on the brakes of the pair of them. Wheel to wheel contact. Somehow we hook it back up around the outside. I feel like this could end very, very badly, but four laps to go with the race. We can do this. Increase ERS deployment. It's time to use some of this charge. Seb and Lewis tied. As they go over the start finish line there, on towards lap 15. Somehow we've managed to build up a 1.7 second gap out of nowhere. Guessing they went side by side and towards the S's. And that's really, really cost the pair of them. But we're struggling at the moment. The car isn't biking the way I want it to. But look at that 2.8 suddenly. It just seems to happen out of nowhere. Seb and Lewis. Well, once again, I've said it quite a few times in the last couple of races. Seb being the ultimate number two. Once again, coming in clutch. Didn't quite work out for him in the end of Brazil. He uh, sorry, Mexico even. He finished fourth. But once again, he's just helped us build a margin right when we need it. 
It's just a case now whether we can hold on to it. Three more laps to go of this race. You can just see how much we're struggling to try and get the car where we want it. But the gap, three seconds to Seb, four and a half to Hamilton. This is perfect for us at the moment. Bottas now over to P3 of the Grand Prix. What has happened to Hamilton? Has he picked up some damage somewhere? He's really, really struggling. And now even the Red Bulls are all over the back of him. As well, by the looks of things on the mini-map. So, yeah, no idea what's happened to Hamilton here. But we've just got to try and keep our head down. And get to the checkered flag. Coming towards the end then. Oh, God. Of lap 17. That's not quite what we wanted. I have no idea what's happened to Hamilton. He's now been jumped by one of the Red Bulls. I'm going to guess it's Albon. The other Red Bulls seem to be applying their pressure to him as well. He might finish P6 in this Grand Prix, which I can't remember the last time we saw Hamilton finish that low in one of these Grand Prix. But onto the final lap of the race we go for us, it all seemed to fall into place right when we needed to. Last week in Mexico, I felt we got a little bit unlucky where we ended up having to fight back for the gap. This time round, we've probably been quite lucky to even get it when you consider the fact we were fighting in P7 at the end of lap one. And yeah, look at that one of the Red Bulls. Hamilton now down to 6th place in this Grand Prix. If, certainly, if he has got damage, maybe, just maybe, he might get jumped by Ocon. I think that's a bit optimistic for us at the moment. But through the S section for the final time in this Grand Prix, it's all once again just falling into place here for Charles Leclerc. And... Oh, right, don't do that. Hamilton, they have an issue with their Hamilton yeah, has got an issue. Confirmed. Hamilton really, really struggling. I've got no idea what's happened to the FPS of the game. But coming down in towards Jung Sal for the final time in this Grand Prix. It's all fallen into place once again. Hamilton with car issues right at the end of the Grand Prix. He might even get jumped by Ocon by the looks of it. What is going to happen between the pair of them? But out of the final corner, up towards the line, it is victory here in Brazil. Absolutely. Just amazing. Well done. A great win then for the Marinello team today. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. Moving on to the driver of the day then, Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? That's it for today's Grand Prix, and from Antony, it's goodbye, and see you again next time. Well, once again there, clearly Crofty not interested in what Anthony Davidson's got to say, but it is another race victory here at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Another one too for the team as well. That was exactly what we needed as we head in towards the final round of the championship there. Bottas in P3, once again the best Mercedes, ahead of Albon, Verstappen and Ocon did get the jump on Hamilton right at the end of the race there, so that means I think a 19 point margin we pulled out from that Brazilian Grand Prix there, and that I think gives us 22 as we head into Abu Dhabi, so I think next time out, all we need for the Drivers' Championship is P8 there. Have a look at the rest of the results there. You can see Magnussen in 8th, Ricardo and Stroll ahead of Gasly, Norris, Perez, Sainz, Grosjean, Kvyat, Raikkonen and Russell, Giovinazzi and Latifi there. And in terms of the championship, yeah, 22 point lead. Now it means we only need P8 in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix come at the end of the season there. In terms of the constructors, 39. So yeah, we only need P8 in both championships irrelevant of where Seb finishes and we will take home both of the crowns there four points required for myself four points required for the team as well there thank you all 
so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do make sure you do get yourself subscribed as well for more of the F1 2020 Charlotte Club Mod Career Mode. Have a look at any other fights going on. They're still close between Racing Point and Haas, as well as the battle for top alpha team as well in P8 overall. And in the Drivers' Championship, eh, we've got Ricardo and Ocon now tied on points as well. That's quite exciting. Uh, anything else going on? Potentially a swap between Sykes and Stroll, but I think apart from that, pretty much all has been decided unless we get a crazy, crazy Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But yeah, that'll do us for this one though, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And yeah, hopefully I will see you next time out ready for the finale where we head to Abu Dhabi.